Hello, and welcome to Creating a Python Dice Roll Application. My name is Joseph, and I'll be your concierge for this video course. In this course, you'll create a Python dice rolling simulator. Ah, yes, finally, freed from the limitations of physical dice, this incredible app is sure to astonish your friends and family. All right, maybe astonish isn't quite the right word, but in your journey as a Python developer, building small projects like this can really help you improve and cement your skills. And that's pretty cool too. This app uses a text-based user interface, also known as a TUI, to simulate rolling dice. And randomness is implemented with Python's built-in random module. You'll be able to roll up to six dice, with each die having six faces. After rolling, the application will generate an ASCII diagram of dice, representing the results. That will then be displayed on screen to the user. Throughout this course, you'll learn how to use random.randint to simulate dice rolling events, how to capture and read user inputs using the built-in input function, how to display ASCII art representations of dice faces to the user with print, how to manipulate Python strings using methods like center and join, and finally, how to improve the design of a Python program using refactoring. Now, before we get rolling, it will help if you're already familiar with a few core concepts. Running Python scripts, variables and constants in Python, fundamental Python data types like string, int, and list, comparison operators and logical expressions, and control flow techniques like conditionals and for loops. If you're still getting the hang of some of these, don't let that deter you. Sometimes the best way to learn is to challenge yourself and try something that may seem like it's beyond your reach. And if things get a little too dicey, you can always take a break and read some articles on realpython.com. All right, you're ready to get started. But first, you'll need to define the project requirements. What should the project do and how will it do that? That's what the next lesson is all about. See you there. Prior to embarking on any new project, you need to define your project's requirements. If not, you're likely to roll snake eyes. You'll start by identifying the key behaviors of your application. Ask yourself, what does this application do? And then you'll determine the implementation strategies you'll use to achieve them. So how can you use Python to enable those behaviors? Watch the demo again and see if you can deduce the steps that need to occur to make everything work as seen. So what are the behaviors? You might have unpacked the steps a little bit differently, but here's the way we've broken them down. The app first has to request the number of dice to roll, then read and validate the user's input. In the background, do something to simulate the randomness of a dice roll. Take that result and create an ASCII diagram with the resulting dice faces. And finally, display that to the user. So how will you be implementing these behaviors? First, for the request, you'll use the built-in input function with the appropriate arguments. Then for validation, you'll define a function called parse input, whose internal logic will include string methods, comparison operators, and conditional statements. To simulate random rolls, you'll define a function called roll dice, which is going to depend largely on Python's built-in random module. Generating the ASCII results will be handled by one more function that you'll write named Generate Dice Faces Diagram, where you'll use for loops and string manipulation methods to create ASCII art. And finally, you'll display those results using the built-in print function. And now, with the project well-defined, you're ready to start coding. But first, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you? If the answer is yes, meet me in the next lesson. Open up your IDE or text editor of choice and start by creating a fresh empty Python file. The approach you'll take for each step of building the app is going to be to start by writing comments or doc strings to describe what the following code or function will be doing and then write the code. We have code for each lesson provided in the downloadable course resources, and it'll make things a lot easier if you have that available as a reference while building your app. Define the app's main code block with a comment. And the first task will be to get and validate user's input. First, you define the variable numDiceInput, and in it, store the return value of the input function with the string argument, how many dice do you want to roll, brackets, one to six. The way the input function works, when this line of code runs, the string that you pass becomes a prompt to the user, and their response via the command line will be the return value of the function as a string. Next, the variable numDice is the output of the parseInput function that you have yet to write. 
accepting the argument num dice input. Now you got to define the parse input function. And you might wonder, well, why do I need the parse input function? First, the input function always returns a string. So that will need to be converted to an integer. And you want to be sure num dice ends up containing a valid integer, one through six, because odds are the user could try passing an invalid input. And to avoid taking any chances, you'll need to verify the input before program execution continues. Place this function above the app's main code block. Def parse input, taking in the parameter input string. And then add a doc string describing the function's return value and behavior. Return input string as an integer between one and six. Check if input string is an integer number between one and six. If so, return an integer with the same value. Otherwise, tell the user to enter a valid number and quit the program. If you want an extra challenge, you can pause here and write the code that does this yourself. If not, follow along as we implement the functionality. If input string dot strip in the set of strings one, two, three, four, five, six, return input string cast as an integer using the int function. This block of code first uses the string method strip to strip the user's input of any extra white space then checks if they've input a valid number. If so, it'll return that number as an int. Else, use the print function to print a message to your user. Please enter a number from one to six. Then raise the exception system exit with the argument one. This ends the program reporting the exit code one, which is a standard exit code used when a program terminates with an error. And save. Now you're ready to run the code you've written so far and see if everything is working as expected. I'll use the integrated terminal for this, python dice.py. And here's the prompt. How many dice do you want to roll? One through six. We'll try four. And nothing happens, which is exactly what we expect because we haven't written any code yet to handle the user's input after validation. Try running the code again and giving it an invalid input, like nine. Perfect. The message you wrote appears and nothing else happens. Okay, you're capturing and validating user inputs. What now? Well, in the next lesson, you'll raise the stakes by implementing the simulated random dice rolls.